Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Very exciting day. I am uh, really pleased and honored to be joined by such great advocates and champions of women's health care who are here today. Uh, this day is really, I think, profoundly significant for that fight for women's health care. We are announcing today the introduction of the Women's Health Care Protection Act to create strong, important federal protections, clear and certain protections for essential women's health care, personal decisions, and constitutional rights. This measure is necessary because of the cascading increase across the country of measures at the state level sponsored relentlessly by anti-choice legislators who are determined to place barriers and obstacles in the way of women who want to continue to make personal decisions about their lives. These increases have been absolutely astonishing. In 2011 alone, there were about 92 restrictions on abortion rights. Since then, there have been 100 more. They range from requirements that clinics have certain layouts to regimens or medicine that are outmoded and unnecessary to counseling requirements at crisis pregnancy centers across the board. What these measures have in common are that they use health care as a false pretext and ploy to restrict women's health care decisions. And this bill sends a message to those anti-choice legislators that those measures are going to be invalidated. They will be barred by a federal statute relying on the federal constitution, the Con Commerce Clause, and the 14th Amendment. This measure is firmly rooted in the United States Supreme Court's decisions that protect a woman's right to choose. It very simply enables access to health care that is vitally important to women to make real the rights they have under the Constitution, to make sure that women are not barred because of the zip code in which they live from exercising those rights. There is a very solid precedent for this decision in federal statutes when federal rights are threatened to protect those rights. Other measures in the past have relied on these same constitutional clauses, and so I feel very comfortable that this measure will be upheld. And I also am encouraged by the fact that there's growing support across the country and in the Senate. We're now up to 29 co-sponsors, which is uh, very, very heartening. Uh, but most important are the advocates in the House of Representatives, and we're going to hear from two of them today. and the activists across the country. You are the ones who are making possible this step toward protecting rights. Citizen advocates who are standing strong and speaking out and letting us know what the practical effects of these anti-choice measures, the ploys that rely on women's health only to restrict women's health care decisions. And you're standing strong and speaking out or what give us the essential support that we need to make this measure successful. And have no doubt, this measure will be successful. It may not be today, it may not be next week, but we will win this fight. And the reasons that we're going to win it are uh, people like Senator Baldwin, Senator Boxer, Representative Chu, Representative Fudge, and uh, Representative Frankel. You will hear from them. And then from Walter Dellinger, uh, one of my legal heroes uh, as, a, as an advocate, as a Supreme Court advocate, uh, and uh, also Nancy Northrup, uh, who is unexcelled as a champion and an advocate.